Let's move forward. <clears throat> All right, so let's get to the, uh, the, the, the why am I looking? All right, so a couple of things that we need to discuss before I let you go. Um, find the lecture notes. Okay, this time what I want you to do is open up chapter number 27, lecture notes. And on top of that, I want you to open up the problems. <clears throat> All right, so you guys will be tested on capacitors, more like capacitance as well as the current and resistance this weekend. I'm going to give you guys a block of four hours starting at noon. It's going to be between noon and four. And if you can do half of it, that's fine. I'm also going to make a second block available between six and 10, all right? So whichever works for you, just take care of the black. So you guys will have two tests on Sunday. Um, I'm looking at the amount of time that you guys are spending per test. It's probably gonna take you at most three hours, but I'm gonna make, give you guys a four hour time period. Okay. Um, in terms of the sort of problems that I want you guys to focus on, let me check to see if my iPad is connected. Okay, the pad is connected, cool. All right, so. <clears throat> All right, so let's open this up. All right, 10 multiple choice questions. Most of the problems are gonna be fairly straightforward and easy. Um, similar to this stuff or that stuff. Okay, um, similar to the problem number three or problem number four. We did three in class four, it's very similar. Four is related to the guy who ended up getting shot and then losing his arms. All right, so the amount of current that he was exposed to about less than an amp. So that's one reason why he was able to survive that. Okay, so how much current does it take to actually stop the heart? It's going to be an amp of current, obviously, is large enough to stop the heart, but the amount of current that he was exposed to was AC current. So the AC current, which is uh, 76 hundredth of an AC current, is large enough to give you a heart attack. Right? So why is it that he did not die because of it? it was, the current was large enough to actually fry his bone marrow, but why is it that it wasn't large enough to actually stop his heart? Well, it was less than an amp, number one. Number two was the duration. It was just a flash, guys. Uh, this amount of current, if you become part of a circuit, is large enough to actually kill you. It can give you a heart attack. It can give you a heart attack fairly fast. All right. So it was less than an amp of current. That's number one. It was just a flash. It was a flashover. So it was large enough to actually fry the bone marrow, but it was still survivable. All right. So now that we had a conceptual discussion about it, the stuff that I want you to focus on while you are getting ready for the test. Problem number two. Okay. So we did not do this problem in class, and we got about five minutes to ten minutes. I'm going to show you how to do this sort of stuff. We didn't talk about current density, so we will talk about it briefly. We didn't talk about drift speed. How fast do you think that the electrons actually move within these conductors? Okay, as soon as you turn on the light, you see the light. Okay, up here is that you turn on the switch, you see the light immediately. It looks like the current, the charges move at the light speed. You know quite well that the charges cannot move at the light speed. So how fast do you think that the charges are moving through the conducting wire? The furthermore, do you think that the current travels through the wire or outside of the wire? Okay, we've been always talking as if the current is traveling outside of the metal conductor, right? So do you think that the current goes through the wire or outside of the wire? So that's always one of those weird discussions. How fast do you think that the electrons travel, given the fact that they cannot travel at the light speed? As soon as you turn on the, you turn on the switch, though, the light appears almost instantaneously. It, it creates the impression that this thing is traveling at the light speed. Don't they go a couple like, centimeters a second or something? Oh, you fast. are. It's not even a couple of centimeters. Okay, Matthew, just hold on to your thought. Okay. Okay. Um, so in terms of the answers to these questions, I'm noticing that just ignore these. These answers are not correct. And you, if you're interested in it, the place to get these answers, okay, so my source is usually this, Holiday, Holiday and Resnick. You can find this kind of in a PDF form usually. All right, and find the chapter 27. The example problems usually come out of that. Uh, this is my favorite source, so this is the one that I'm using. All right, so let's talk about the current density. Let's talk about the drift speed. So problem number two is something that you need to focus on because the multiple choice questions, I think half of them are again, kind of related to this. And along the same lines, I want you guys to focus on problem number seven. All right, problem number seven is an extension of the uh, previous problem, that problem number two. They are kind of related. The rest of them are straightforward. Uh, there's nothing much to it. Um, just find the right formula and use it. All right, so having talked about it, we will probably continue this tomorrow, but let's get started on it. What I'm interested in, so is the following. All right, okay, guys, find this. All right, so this is chapter number 27, lecture notes, just find that, just open that up. All right, I'm not gonna test you on the derivations, but I want you to understand the concepts. Okay, so let's, we've been talking about current, the current is the net charge per second. 
but the actual definition, book definition of current is the net charge per second going across a certain cross-sectional area. So this is a cross-sectional area. So that's the net charge through that area that's going to give you the current density. Uh, so this is known as the net charge going across this area per second that you're looking at. So this is the amount of charge going across that area per second. It's known as current density. All right, so current density instead of current, the current density is a second way of looking at it. So this represents the net charge per second per area or the current per area is your current density. All right, in this case, it's a circular area, obviously, so it's going to be pi r squared. All right, so we're done with that concept. All right, how fast these charges move and whether or not the current travels within the wire or outside of the wire is a discussion that lasts forever. All right, normally for these calculation purposes, it is assumed that the current density is constant, which means that the current actually travels inside the wire. Okay, this is the way it is done in all physics books. Just remember that. I'm very surprised that I couldn't find any relevant test indicating that the current actually travels within the wire. All right, I've seen a lot of technical arguments either way, but this derivation assumes that the current travels within the wire. Because I would think that the light charges would be pushed to the surface, but usually there's no net charge inside the wire, so which means that you can push the charges in a given direction. So it, to me, it makes sense that the current has to travel inside the wire because if there's no net charge, this thing is neutral. All right, so there's an electric arm from left to right, and these are negative charges, so they will experience a force in the opposite direction. So they will accelerate in this direction. Okay, but the motion is not impeded because of the fact that you got this atomic structure, which is going to impede the charges. All right, so we're trying to figure out the speed of these individual charges. So we'll call it the drift velocity. So the question is, is it near the light speed? How fast will the information get transferred from this point to that point? That's what we want to know. All right, so the speed is distance over time. All right, so we're interested in the speed of these charges along the length of this wire. So we're only interested in this length. So this L represents that. So how far, and this is the time it's gonna take for these charges to travel that distance. So the mathematics is straightforward. So it's a measured distance over measured time is gonna give us the speed. Okay, so this is where it gets kind of interesting. All right, if you're a physicist, this is what you will love more than anything else. If you're an engineer, <laughs> your interest in physics is not to the same degree. So uh, that's the reason why instead of just showing you the mathematics, step by step, I decided to write it out and talk about it. All right, guys, net charge is the total number of charges that you have. Previously, this capital N used to be a lowercase n, and I decided to change the symbol. All right, this, low, this represents the total number of charges. You can express the total number of charges in terms of the charge density. All right, this lowercase n represents the total number of charges per unit volume. All right, so the charge density times the volume is going to give you the total number of charges. Okay, so in this case, what is this the volume of? All right, this represents the volume of this length of wire that you're looking at. So this is the area, this is the length. So now you've got the volume of this area. All right, so the net charge is going to be expressed in terms of the charge density. All right, notice that there's a term which is L. So you can isolate L, and then when you isolate L, you got your L, and then you just plug it into that formula. All right, so when you plug it into that formula, the expression now is going to look like this in terms of the drift velocity. All right, just stay with me for a second. Guys, net charge per second, net charge per time is your current, and then the current divided by area, this expression that you're looking at, becomes the current density. All right, so this is the amount of current going through the area of the wire per second. So this is your current density, so this expression becomes your current density. So you take this and plug it in here, and then it gives you an expression that looks like this. All right, so the drift velocity, simply stated, is the ratio between the current density and this is the electron charge density, number of electrons per unit volume. Okay, we will continue tomorrow, but let me ask you this question. All right, so the current density in this case represents the total number of charges per volume moving at the drift velocity, that's what it means. But how do you know the number of charges that you have within the current? How do you figure that out? All right, so that's something that we will get back to tomorrow. All right, so we have maybe about 10 more minutes of discussion left tomorrow. So we'll finish this up tomorrow and then we will start a new chapter. Uh, the next chapter is the continuation of this chapter. So we will talk about resistors in parallel and in series. What if you have uh, circuits which have complicated setups, like you have a bunch of resistors all over the place, parallel in series with multiple voltage sources. How do you handle a circuit like that? So we will get to use the Kirchhoff's rules for that one. All right, so we will move on to the next chapter tomorrow. All right. In terms of the labs, okay, uh, there are two labs set up. Don't worry about them for now. Okay, so I'm going to change the lab setups a little bit. I want you guys to do one lab per week. Okay, so don't worry about the labs for this week. I'm going to change the deadline on it. 
I did this simulation lab. It seems fairly straightforward. This seems fairly straightforward in a sense that I think you guys can do this individually and then you can do the quiz afterwards. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a deadline on that. It's probably going to be not this Friday, but next Friday for the first lab. And it shouldn't take you more than an hour. There's a bit of a write-up involved. It's straightforward. And, and then do the quiz. I think I'm going to make the quiz 50% of your lab grade. And then the 50% is going to be a simple write-up. If it, it's complicated, I'm going to put you guys into groups. But for now, don't worry about the lab for this week. All right. Let me just figure things out. I'm going to set up the first lab for next week. It's going to be due next Friday. All right. So any questions? I'll be good. All right, so if you have any questions, all right, once again, just stick around. Um, I'll okay. be back. Yeah, go ahead, Lucas. Um, the, for the write-up for the lab, I did the electrostatic force one today. How do you want us to submit that? Do you want us to do an upload on Canvas or email to you or what? Okay, do, do me a favor, do an upload in Canvas. Um, that would probably... Okay, say it again? You'll have to open a link or someplace for me to do that. Okay, so that that's a good... Okay, all right, let me figure out how... Okay, um, I need to... Set that up properly, if that's the case. Let me figure that out. Get back to you on that one. Okay, thank you. Okay, Lucas, thank you. All right, guys, I'll be back in uh, five minutes, eight minutes. So if you have any questions, stick around.